After a wave of bank failures in the United States over the past few weeks, the banking panic of 2023 has spread to Europe. Credit Suisse is the biggest domino to fall so far in what is the biggest event in the world of banking since the global financial crisis. The Swiss bank was one of the largest banks in the world and a major player in international finance, far larger and more important than Silicon Valley Bank and Signature Bank. But despite its size and 167-year history, the Swiss bank was unable to save itself and it was sold to UBS in an emergency takeover that was forced by Swiss authorities. On Friday, the liquidity outflows and market volatility showed that it was no longer possible to restore the necessary confidence and that a swift and stabilizing solution was absolutely necessary. This solution is the takeover of Credit Suisse by UBS. Credit Suisse was founded in 1856 by Alfred Escher and expanded overseas with the opening of its first international branch in New York during the year 1939. Since then, the Swiss bank expanded its operations to over 50 countries throughout the world. Surprisingly, the bank managed to navigate the global financial crisis without receiving a bailout from the Swiss government, unlike its rival and new acquirer UBS which required nearly $60 billion in support from the Swiss National Bank, the Central Bank of Switzerland. In the aftermath of the global financial crisis, Credit Suisse cut jobs and pivoted away from investment banking and doubled down on its wealth management business. This was when certain scandals started poking holes in the bank like Swiss cheese. The bank was caught up in several cases for helping Americans evade taxes which resulted in 2.6 billion of fines. But can you really blame the bank? It was simply trying to make its home country proud, a country that until recently prided itself on its bank secrecy laws until IRS regulation required the country to disclose American assets held in the country. But this was only the start of the bank's problems. All of these problems would eventually melt the bank's reputation away like Swiss chocolate. In the international arena, the bank had to pay $196 million to settle U.S. charges for violating sanctions on Iran and Sudan. But that fine was less than half of the penalty it paid for its infamous tuna bonds scandal. This scandal involved a $1.3 billion loan that the bank extended to Mozambique for various maritime projects. But a shady contractor secretly arranged kickbacks of over $100 million including $50 million for Credit Suisse bankers for arranging more favorable loan terms. The bank was fined nearly 350 million euros by global regulators, plead guilty to wire fraud, and agreed to forgive millions of debt owed by Mozambique. Although the bank survived the global financial crisis, it didn't escape the GFC totally unscathed. In 2016, the bank was forced to settle with the U.S. for 5.3 billion on charges that it misled investors about the quality of mortgage-backed securities that it sold between 2005 and 2007. After all. Credit Suisse just wanted a piece of the action. All the other investment banks were doing the exact same thing. In 2020, Credit Suisse was involved in a spying scandal that led to the removal of Tijane Thiam after five years as the company's CEO. The investigation uncovered that the bank was spying on Iqbal Khan who left the bank to work at UBS in its wealth management division. To be fair, Credit Suisse only wished to protect its position as the top wealth management firm in Switzerland. 2021 was not a great year for Credit Suisse. It was the primary backer of Greensill Capital, a supply chain finance company that suffered a stunning $10 billion collapse in March 2021. A few weeks later on March 26, Credit Suisse lost $5.5 billion from a separate scandal when Arcagas Capital Management blew up when total return swaps that it held on a basket of risky stocks declined in value. Credit Suisse, alongside other investment banks, were the primary counterparties to these derivative transactions. Goldman Sachs, in true Goldman Sachs fashion, caught wind of the risks and was the first to unwind its position in these derivatives and did not report material losses from the trades. Credit Suisse and Nomura accounted for the bulk of the losses on these trades as they took longer to unwind their exposure. Yes, there is more. In 2022, the Swiss bank was penalized over 20 million relating to its involvement in a money laundering scheme for a Bulgarian drug trafficking gang. But once again, Swiss banking and money laundering seemed to be inseparable. 
Credit Suisse became known as the bank with a terrible reputation aside from the admiration it received from criminals. This leads us to the recent events that led to its final act. Even without the recent bank failures that we've seen, clients and investors in Credit Suisse were not confident the bank would survive its massive turnaround plan and it likely would have been sold for parts anyway. In early March 2023, the company had to delay its 2022 annual filing after it received a call from the U.S. Securities and Exchange Commission citing material weakness in its financial reporting controls. The bank reassured investors that its numbers were accurate and there was nothing to worry about. But when you are told not to worry you should probably worry. This started a wave of selling in its stock, but that wave intensified to a tsunami on Wednesday, March 15. On this day the chairman of the Saudi National Bank, the largest shareholder of Credit Suisse, said that they would not offer more capital to the struggling bank. This is what he had to say. I'm wondering whether you would be open to assisting further if there was another call for additional liquidity from Credit Suisse? The answer is absolutely not, for many reasons, outside the simplest reason, which is regulatory and statutory. Behind the scenes, clients of the bank were continuing to withdraw massive sums of money from the bank, amounts that were greater than the initial withdrawals that occurred in fall of 2022 as speculation the bank would fail intensified during another acute period of stress in global markets as interest rates marched higher. After the bank's largest shareholder refused additional support and given recent bank failures in the United States, the run on Credit Suisse amplified. At the time, the Swiss National Bank extended a 50 billion credit facility to the bank and privately committed an additional 100 billion. While Swiss regulators were assuring the public that the situation was fine, behind closed doors they were panicking and demanded that UBS acquire CS. It was reported that Swiss regulators said UBS would need to take over Credit Suisse or else risk destroying Switzerland's reputation and ignite more contagion fears in global markets. Swiss regulators had to save face and ensure that the Swiss banking system would stand firm despite immense pressure and they weren't going to let Credit Suisse topple the global financial system. There were a variety of suitors trying to swoop in and pick up CS for pennies on the dollar. The Saudi National Bank which itself triggered the largest single daily decline in CS stock, tried to provide emergency capital to the bank alongside a triumvirate of Gulf investors that owned roughly 25% of the bank. At the same time, BlackRock flew out to Switzerland to try a partial acquisition of the bank focusing on its asset management division. But Swiss regulators were insistent upon a transaction that kept the deal within its border and belonged to Switzerland. After all why let a good crisis go to waste? After days of negotiations, CS and UBS finally came to terms on an all-stock deal worth just over $3 billion, up from the initial $1 billion offer. There was a tremendous amount of back and forth as Credit Suisse was trying to benefit its shareholders in a deal that was mandated by the Swiss government. Furthermore, it is widely known that UBS had contingency plans surrounding the potential takeover of Credit Suisse that it developed over the past few years. The deal was struck at a heavy discount to the price Credit Suisse closed at just prior to the takeover talk that weekend. Furthermore, the deal was controversial in that it was mandated without a shareholder vote. To make matters worse, the deal wiped out AT1 bondholders, a type of conditional convertible bond created to cushion losses in a systemic bankruptcy, before any common stock investors suffered losses. To be fair, this clause was written into the prospectus of the bond offering but it was untested in practice on such a large scale. In summary, Swiss regulators needed a solution that would restore confidence and safeguard Switzerland's banking reputation. But the solution will result in a singular bank that is now Switzerland's last competitor in the global arena. CS was a terrible bank to begin with and as Warren Buffett says, when the tie goes out we will see who is swimming naked. CS was certainly swimming naked and its demise was widely anticipated. The recent panic in financial markets created a perfect environment for Credit Suisse to finally collapse. It remains to be seen how the completion of the deal will materialize and more importantly what impact the CS takeover will have on the financial system and global economy. Although the panic of 2023 is different in nature than the global financial crisis, there are tremendous risks in the financial system that should not be ignored. Already, markets are pricing increased risk in Deutsche Bank and it could be the next global systemically important bank to come under pressure. Just remember that Bear Stearns failed nine months before Lehman Brothers, the failures occurred in March and September 2008 respectively. 
After Bear Stearns failed, regulators tried to assure markets that everything was fine. Federal Reserve Chairman Ben Bernanke infamously stated that subprime was contained. Markets rallied in that intervening period, but the failure of Bear Stearns was only the beginning. The collapse of Lehman reignited the panic and led to the global financial crisis, which was the worst economic downturn since the Great Depression. It is important to realize that the world is not coming to the end, but at the same time that does not mean that there is nothing to worry about and the financial system is safe and sound. We want to encourage you to do your own research and come to your own conclusion on how to keep your finances safe. At the end of the day, it is your money and you should take responsibility for it. R.I.P. Credit Suisse